Welcome to Make Something With Me, David Petrito, and today I'm going to give you a tour of my studio workshop. Today's video is brought to you by Simply Safe, and we're going to chat more about home and shop security later in the video. This is a converted garage and not an ordinary wood shop. It's unique to me, my needs, and desires. Yes, I have a drop ceiling and carpeted floors and other odd features you probably don't want for your space. This video is not meant to brag about the tools I have, but it's here to answer a lot of questions that I get. We're gonna talk about the tools I like, the tools I dislike, my dust collection, which tools I purchased and which ones were given to me. The first thing I wanna say is you don't have to have the tools that I have to make the things that I make. We'll talk more about my decision process when it comes to buying tools throughout the video. We're gonna start this off by talking about the bandsaw right here. I've got two bandsaws. I got a large bandsaw and then I got a smaller bandsaw over there. Why do I have two bandsaws? Because I try to put out a new video every single week and two bandsaws allow me to have two different blades without blade changes and allows me to be more efficient. This bigger bandsaw here, this is the Laguna 14 BX. This is a 220 volt bandsaw. I've got three tools that require 220. You don't have to have 220 tools to do ordinary woodworking. I just use this for straight cuts and resawing. This bandsaw is two and a half horsepower and that allows me to throw big logs through here. It'll cut whatever I throw at it. It's got the big three quarter inch Laguna resaw king blade in there and I love that. It leaves a really nice smooth cut. Dust collection on this saw is this Rockler Dustrite wall mounted dust collector with the canister. Normally these hang on the wall, but I have it on the floor here. One of the things I really like about this saw is the dust collection is really good. It's got dust collection up top and dust collection down below. That particular dust collector, this is the only tool that it is hooked up to. I want to make an outfeed table that has a fan with a filter right here to suck up some of the dust that gets airborne and it'll kind of cover up this mess down here. I did pay for this Laguna with my own money. Moving over to my joiner. This is the Rikon 8 inch helical head joiner. And instead of having straight blades in there, it has the helical head, which has these little carbide cutters in there. Leaves a super, super smooth surface. You don't even have to sand afterwards. I like that because no matter what grain direction the wood is, it'll leave a nice surface. With a straight blade, you'll, you might get some chip out and this is a lot quieter. This is not hooked up to dust collection. It doesn't make dust, it makes chips and they kind of just collect right here. And when this gets full, it kind of falls in there. One of these days I might put a bag or I have it hooked up to that dust collector. I can get an eight foot board in and an eight foot board out. But when I build the table here for my bandsaw, it's gonna interfere with that because the bandsaw is a little bit higher. So I'm going to make a little flip top so that the tabletop flips up and I can still get an eight foot board in and out. If I ever have to join a board longer than eight foot, I can wiggle this out and I'll have all the room that I need. And I did purchase this joiner with my own money. Right here is my CNC. It's kind of a mess right now. This is the X-Carve CNC by Inventables. This is their bigger machine. They did give this to me. They are friends of mine and they're located in Chicago. For dust collection, I have a shop vac underneath and I just run a hose up to here. Right now, it's kind of a mess. I'm selling some stereo equipment for a friend of mine. Uh, I have the Ultimaker 3D printer back here. That actually belongs in the office. It has to go back in there. We're gonna have some, some doors and uh, a shelf right here. So still working on this area over here. Keeping on with the digital tools, this is my Glowforge laser. I did pay for this Glowforge laser with my own money, but before this came out, they loaned me a pre-production model. And so I got to play with the Glowforge before mine came. I was one of the early backers when this first came out. So I got mine a lot cheaper than what they sell for now. This one is the pro unit. My, the one that I had before this, the one that they loaned me was a pre-production model and was not the pro unit. I get asked all the time, should I get the pro unit? 
to be 100% honest, I can't tell the difference between the regular model and the pro model. Uh, they seem to cut the same to me. The only difference that I have noticed is this one has a pass through so I can run larger boards through there, which I have never used. So that is sitting on this cabinet here. I still need to make the doors and a drawer. This drawer is going to hold all my CNC bits and my precision measuring tools. And then down below, I keep a bunch of acrylics and some plywood. Let's move over to our sanding station over here. This disc sander and this spindle sander, they are the two oldest tools I have in my shop. They are both from Harbor Freight and they've both lasted a long time. This is my most recent sanding purchase. This is a belt sander from Ryobi. I needed this for some of the projects that I'm working on in my next Book. This is my little grizzly belt sander. I don't use it very much except for shortening down screws or running some metal on there and it works great for that. The dust collection that I have for these guys is this Festool dust extractor. And right now I have to manually switch the hose on all these sanders. One of these days I am going to build a little manifold to automatically kind of do its thing. The reason I like the Festool dust extractor is when I turn this on, this automatically kicks on as well. And the Festool dust extractors are so much quieter than a normal shot back. Another reason I like the Festool dust extractor is it does not throw dust back in the air. So we're trying to create a very safe dust free environment and that thing is fantastic. Over here, this is my drum sander. This is one of my newer purchases. This is the Supermax 1632, which means it is 16 inches wide, but this is an open end. So I can actually run a 32 inch board through it, flip it around and do the other side. Now it slides out because there's no room for in feed and out feed. So I have it on some drawer slides to pull that out to run boards through. Then when I don't need it, it slides back. This is also hooked up to one of the wall mounted Rockler dust collectors, which is hidden in here. That is the only tool that dust collector is hooked up to. You have to have a dust collector when you're running drum sanders. All of these sanders are not necessary in woodworking, but these specialty sanders do speed up time considerably, especially the drum sander and the disc sander. This is my second bandsaw. This is a small tabletop Rikon, the 10305. I will use this bandsaw for small cuts and curved cuts. I have a 3 16 4 TPI skip tooth blade on here. That's the only blade I ever use in this saw. And this saw has really, really impressed me. I don't like recommending tools to people, but if you are on a budget and you need a good bandsaw, I cannot recommend this guy enough. We ran four inch thick bandsaw box blanks through here and it cut through it no problem. And like I mentioned earlier, I like having two bandsaws so I don't have to swap out blades and it allows me to work faster and be more efficient. Down below the bandsaw is my Tarmac sharpening system. I just got this and I really like this. I used to have the WorkSharp 3000. I gave that to Dan. The WorkSharp sharpening system is great. It's great for planes uh, and, and chisels and anything that's flat. I upgraded to the Tormac because I'm starting to get into turning and I got some gouges that I want to turn and it has it has some things to give you an equal bevel all the way around that does this swivelly thing. I've also got some carving tools that I can carve on there that the workshop could not do. This is also a wet sharpening system as well, meaning that the wheel goes through a reservoir of water and that keeps all the dust in the water instead of dust in the air. And I don't like breathing fine metal dust. So yeah, that guy is crazy expensive, but it is also crazy awesome. It also aligns with the future of this channel of trying to get more hand tools involved in what I do as well as more digital tools. Before we talk about the next tool, I want to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an easy to use customizable home security system that is free from contracts and hidden costs. Having just upgraded its system, Simply Safe devices are now half the size as before and reach nearly double the range with five times faster speeds. It's an incredibly effective, reliable home security system. It's all monitored by professionals 24 seven who will call you in an emergency 
and send police help if needed. And this does work because I've had experience with this and I'll tell you about that story here in a little bit. It's really easy and intuitive to use. Really thoughtful features. Simply Safe has fair and honest prices with no contracts or hidden fees. Equipped for worst case scenarios. Doesn't matter if you lose power, Wi-Fi, or the system is attacked. A couple years ago, my father had to spend some time in the hospital. So while he was away, I installed Simply Safe in his house. I was able to monitor his house all the way from my house. And in fact, in the middle of the night, we got an emergency phone call from Simply Safe saying the back door had been open and they had contacted the local authorities and a sheriff was sent out immediately. That is a true story. This is a beautifully designed base station, upgraded from the one I installed a couple years ago. I really like the look of the new ones. It's super easy to set up. You won't need a technician and you won't need any special tools. Simply Safe currently only ships within the United States. Please visit simplysafe.com slash make something. There'll be a link down below in the description. All right, let's get back to the shop tour. Thanks, Simply Safe. So here is my TV and my mini split heating and air conditioning. I get lots of comments about how the AC is going to drip on the TV in the summertime and the heater is going to melt the TV in the wintertime. A year and a half later, Everything is still working fine. Over here to the right, we have the Inventables Carvey CNC. It doesn't belong out here. It actually needs to go back into my office, but I brought it out here when Evan and Caitlin were here. And the great thing about this is it's fully enclosed, so no dust gets in the air. The first CNC that we talked about, the X-Carve, that's a little bit more less expensive than other CNCs because you have to piece the whole thing together and it takes like a good six hours. This CNC that they sell, you don't, it comes pre-assembled. It's all ready to go right out of the box. All of those tools down that line I purchased with my own money. Inventables did send me the CNC. Like I said, they are friends of mine and good people out of Chicago. Over here in the corner, this is my Jet Drill Press. I like Jet as a company they make great tools. I just don't like this particular model. I did not like the chuck that came with it because the key would slip and it's, it's like a knuckle buster. So I went ahead and replaced that with one of these that you can just hand tighten. I'll have a link to that model down in the description. That makes changing bits a lot faster. Uh, the thing that I really, really dislike about this particular model is the depth stop. Listen to that terrible sound. It takes about 45 minutes to move it one inch. I think this could be done in a lot more efficient and better way. I know John Heise has a great video where uh, he made a little jig the, to, to move that up and down a lot faster. One of these days, I'm going to get a, a drill press that's more suited for woodworking. The reason I have my drill press in the corner is this seems to be the most efficient use of space. I can actually get a six foot board in here. And if I need to, if I have a longer board, it's on wheels, I can wheel it out and I can drill into longer boards. Really soon, I'm going to build a little cabinet that's going to fit in the corner and that cabinet is going to be on wheels and it's gonna have uh, drawers for storage to store all my bits in there. And then it's also going to have a chip collector. The drill press and the lathe are the two messiest tools in my shop and it's hard to run dust collection on them. I've seen all the jigs out there, all the different apparatuses and they get in the way and they're just not very good. So what I wanna do is I wanna build a little bin that just kinda of collects the chips and I can sweep them into the trash. To the right of that, we have my jet lathe. This is a great lathe, I really like it. I just wish I would have bought something a little bit different. From the center to the bed is just a little over six inches, which means I can't turn anything larger than a 12 inch bowl. And from center to center is less than the size of a table leg. So one of these days, hopefully soon, I get a bigger lathe that has more capacity. I did buy a bed extension to extend this. And then some people have recommended that you can get risers to bring this up so you can turn bigger bowls. But I think I'm just going to get something bigger, beefier, and heavier than this. I think I'm gonna give it to cameraman Dan when I get a new one. This is my router station. I have a Porter cable in there. I'm not sure what the model number is. It's the, it's the Porter cable router that everybody owns. I've had that router for a long time. I did purchase the Incra router lift, which makes lowering 
measuring and raising the bit a lot easier than getting in and doing that by hand. I highly recommend getting the lift if you have the budget for it. The table and the fence, that does come from Rockler and they sent this to me as part of a build video that I did a while back. What I really, really love about this router table is the dust collection. There is dust collection on the inside and then up top and it works really, really good. Again, this is hooked up to a wall mounted Rockler dust right, which I have on the floor. I've got four of these in the shop. The reason I really like these particular dust collectors is they're fairly quiet. I get the canister so it's filters all the dust and it's easy to change the bags. I keep them on the floor because I don't want to visually see them. One of these days this counter is going to extend over here and it's going to hide all of this. Over here is my miter station. This is the Festool Capex miter saw. Probably the most expensive miter saw that you can possibly get. The reason I got this particular model is because it has the highest rated dust collection on any miter saw in the world and dust collection is very, very important to me. It's still not perfect, but it is really hard to collect the dust and the chips from a miter saw. You see people build the bins to try to collect it. This does a really good job. It is hooked up to another one of the Festool dust extractors, and I like that. So when I turn the saw on, that automatically comes on. Recently, I built this miter station. I took off the fence and that allows me a lot more space to work. Some people like the fence. I don't because sometimes I just need more flat area to work. And I've got this little T-track here with this stop. This has worked great. A while ago, I did buy some adhesive back tape measure to put on here, but I just not have gotten around to it. I use a tape measure most of the time anyway, so maybe I won't even put that on there. Who knows? This cabinet, you can see I have never finished it. I still need to put shelves and doors and drawers. That is the miter station. Over here we have the mobile cart and my workbench. This guy is on wheels, which moves out of the way. I have my Festool Random Orbit Sander. I like this guy because it doesn't vibrate as much as other sanders. I used to have a Bosch and before that a Skill and the, it was very uncomfortable to use. This is nice and big. This is hooked up to this little miniature dust extractor which just hangs off of my bench. Speaking of my bench, I got a build video on this. The drawers open up both ways, so no matter what side of the bench you're on. I keep my clamps in the tool bench, so when I'm gluing up and assembling my projects, they're all right there within reach. I also keep all my measuring and cutting tools down in here. Like I mentioned before, we're gonna have a second video on my second channel where we go through my drawers. Now let's talk about what is in the middle of my shop. Over here, I have my planer. This is a Rikon 16 inch planer. You might recall I had the DeWalt small lunchbox style planer before, and that works fine for most people. I just wanted something bigger that I can run more boards through so I can work faster. This has the helical heads, just like the joiner, which means it has those little carbide tips in there and everything that comes out of here is glassy smooth. And this planer is hooked up to this dust collection down here. Again, it is one of the Rockler dust right wall mounted dust collectors that I keep on the floor. This is the only dust collector in the shop that is hooked up to multiple tools. It's also hooked up to the table saw and I have these blast gates that I can open and close over here. This dust collector is also hooked up to this Oneida dust cyclone. This separates all the heavy chips before it even even gets to the dust collector. This is a lot easier to access and a lot easier to empty out. And since the planer makes a lot of chips, it saves on bags. The reason I have multiple dust collectors is I don't have room to have one central dust collector. And plus, I don't want to see all the duct work running throughout the shop. My shop is different than your shop. You might want one single dust collector. You might want tools on your wall. I want to walk into an environment where I feel comfortable, where I feel creative. And so this is my choice to have multiple dust collectors hidden on the floor underneath the tools. Again, I did pay for that with my own money. This is the center of my workshop. This is the saw stop, three horsepower table saw. I love this thing. So full disclosure, they did give me this saw, but I had a saw stop before this 
that I purchased with my own money. And when I moved into the shop, we worked out a deal where they sent me basically the same saw I already had, but they sent me the three horsepower one. I will say this, for the type of woodworking that I do, I don't think three horsepower is necessary. I'm not running big ass boards through here all day. So the three horsepower is a nice to have, but I will say it is not completely necessary. So if your shop is not wired up for 220 and all you can get is the 1.75 horsepower, you will be happy with that. The special thing about the saw stop, if you don't know, is it has flesh sensing technology. If the saw is on and you run your finger into it, a brake comes up, stops the blade instantly and pulls it underneath the table. The overhead dust collection arm that came with this model. I did modify it a little bit. I put these horsehair bristles on the bottom here and it's just kind of Velcroed on. That's just a little bit of extra security keeping that dust down. Because sometimes when you have this over here and you have a board and you're just cutting off a little bit of that board, this kind of sticks out and dust can get out. So. I modified that, got those on Amazon. I still get questions of people asking me if I like the carpet in the wood shop, and yes, I do. It really quiets down the place. It makes the room so much more comfortable, and I'm on my knees a lot, so it saves my knees, my feet, and my back. It takes a little bit longer to clean up, but that's what Dan is for. This is my shop. It is very unique to my wants and my needs. Your shop is gonna be completely different based on your budget, your space, and the things that you are making. I don't want tools and duct work on the wall. I want it to be a creative space, so I'm filling my walls with art instead. I think I was very honest in the tools that were given to me, the tools that I paid for, what I like and what I dislike. I'm starting to get into more hand tools and more of that work. And I wanna, I wanna take hand tools and digital tools like the CNC and laser and bring them together. So you're gonna see a lot more of that in the future. The future of this channel is leaning more towards non-functional art pieces that's that's a ways down the road don't don't unsubscribe just yet i will have a second video and we're going to go through all the drawers what's behind this wall you're going to see exactly how unorganized i actually am there'll be a link to that video down below there'll also be a link to all the tools that i mentioned down below so like many of you i started off with used basic tools my first tool purchase was a used miter saw on craigslist and then i got a old used grizzly table saw for a hundred bucks and as time went by i slowly upgraded to bigger machines you might not have the exact same tools that I do, but that doesn't mean you can't build the things that I am building. I factor in a few considerations when I buy tools. The biggest one is dust collection. I don't want dust getting into the air. So whatever I can do to keep the dust out of the air. So I try to buy the tools that has the highest rate of dust collection. Sometimes like the miter saw, that means buying the most expensive one, but my health is very important. Just because you don't have a $1,500 miter saw and yours only costs a couple hundred dollars, doesn't mean you can't do what I do. Everybody has a different budget. Everybody has a different purpose. Everybody's making different things and everybody's shop is different. Woodworkers are really intelligent people and they are problem solvers. You don't have this tool, use this tool. It's as simple as that. I started small and upgraded over the years. I make no apologies for the tools that I have. All right, folks, that is it. We'll see you next week with a project video. As always, be fun, be fun. As always, ha what do I say, Dan? Slow down, Pachuta. This is a long video, so I'm talking really fast. I get comments all the time like, you talk too fast. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.